are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.com. Recording. Welcome to Off Planet TV, Off Planet Radio. The website is offplanetradio.com. I'm Randy Moggins, and this is the uh, latest installment of Off Planet TV for uh, the, what is this, the third week of March. We're, oh, God, we go into the odds of March. It's, well, today's March 13th. We're recording this. So, yeah, we go into the odds of March. That's always really special. The, um, calendars and dates that flip them all around and all the numbers. Um, so welcome to the show. This is being um, streamed on our friends over at ConsciousConsumerNetwork.tv. Courtesy of them, don't forget to support free and independent media in all of its forms because it's important right now. Uh, the platforms that we're using are crucial to get out information that's not going to be seen in the mainstream, certainly now that we're in election fever here in the U.S., which is infecting the entire planet. Um, with me with me on screen, you will notice the guest. He comes to us from Cosmic Voice. He's been with us before when he was on with Drake, and uh, I want to welcome to the show Thomas Williams. Welcome. Hi, Randy, and thanks. And uh, thanks for having me on, and I hope... Uh uh, your listeners will find the, the show of interest. So. I think they will. I think, you know, a lot of what we're going to talk about, everything's connected. Um, you and I have spent a lot of hours talking and discovered all of the overlaps between the things that you're doing and the things that I've been working on for about nine years as well. And it seems like we're in a trajectory where people are intersecting, connecting, bouncing off of each other with really programs and ideas that for a long time we were all isolated. And that's an important aspect of all of this is the fact that there is connection now, that, that there's validation for the things we have been working on as individuals and the things that um, are now coalescing, I'll say on kind of subgroup levels at the present time, we see the formation of different groups they have different focuses, but they have a common goal, and the goal is to bring consciousness up and to get us past this dark place in history that we've been living in for a long time. Thomas, you're, you're an expatriate from Great Britain, the UK. You've been in the United States, and yet I hear your accent, but you talk more like an American than many Americans. <laughs> that I know. Um, tell us a little bit about your journey uh, how, you know, we got to the place, I, I, you should know, by the way, that I posted some, uh, I posted a query out on the CV this afternoon before the show. All right. So this is some questions, so you, we, we'll work some of those in. But one of the questions that we got, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't have it in front of me, was what made you give your life up and go connect with Drake to do this <laughs> crazy, insane thing that you're doing? So it opens the, it kind of opens the pages of the book to say, how in the hell did you get here? Um, many childhood experiences that didn't, uh, I didn't understand at the time. Um, some aspects of it still learning. Um, some uh, ET stuff. Um, some knowledge that I had as a young child that I didn't know where it came from. I uh, do not read books. I didn't read books at school, which is a great consternation to some of the teachers. I just 
just it wasn't for me. I'll sit there uh, when I had time, uh, which is no longer the case, and sit there and read the internet for seven, eight, nine hours mm -hmm. a day, night, or weekend, um, just catching up on all the, the research. Initially, my point of entry was to find out about ET knowledge. You know, was I just the only nut in my hometown of Liverpool who believed in ETs? Um, suddenly you find, well, no, they're not, but they're all hidden. And suddenly the internet um, brought a lot of people uh, out into the open. Yeah. Some with good intentions, and then obviously as time went on, um, some were not. Yeah. You got the diversionary tactics, um, we've all witnessed them, and um, we've all seen the escalation of that over the last uh, four or five years. Yeah. Uh, spoke on Cosmic Voice about how difficult it is if people, people came in on with uh, um, the Drake interview, the likes of our members, if that was their starting point, then uh, you're kind of struggling unless you've listened to the people have been a lot more consistent, which is very few people like yourself, you know, and Drake, um, and myself, uh, I pride myself on being uh, honest. I double check, triple check, and whole heaps of different uh, uh, discourse with a lot of different people. Um, it was, it's, you know, I don't want to be, um, I don't like being lied to, and so I don't want to be lying to the people either. And so uh, sometimes uh, you get, uh, from my own point of view, I, I will hold back on information until I get further clarification. So I know what I'm going to put out is at least as close as to truth as possible. You know? um, so I followed uh, David Wilcock and uh, I followed Stephen Greer and um, that whole gamut, uh, Richard Hogan, uh, Richard Dolan, you know, there was a whole gamut of people uh, 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 that came up. Obviously, the main one then really was uh, Camelot, which is Kerry Cassidy and Bill Ryan. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Uh, some people don't like Kerry, but some someone asked the question today. You know, it's difficult uh, as an interviewer, uh, which we both do. Um, sometimes when you get in a level of whistleblowers that she gets or was getting at the time, it was very brand new. There's lots more coming forward, um, as you mentioned in the question. Uh, sometimes at that time, uh, the people that were coming forward, um, you only got one chance to interview. That's exactly right. Yeah. Because uh, the, there was so few whistleblowers and so uh, you know, it, 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 you kind of, I think she went in into the interviews with that uh, thought in mind whereby if I don't get as much information out of this person in this interview, the chances are A, they get taken out, which has happened a lot of the times then, uh, or B, uh, they're going to go underground because they've been threatened, they're going to get taken out. So. Uh, I followed, I followed them all, and then Wilcock, and then I heard the Drake interview. Um, Drake interview was six, seven months, seven months after I attended my first conference. I didn't go to learn knowledge. I, I went to test my intuition on the people who were giving me the knowledge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's everyone, it was quite a who's who at the time. Um, there was about 12, 13 speakers. Uh, Duncan was an Ophinium was another one. I spoke to Aaron McCullum. Um, it was quite, you know, uh, I can't remember it, all the names. Uh, Miriam Delcado, Bob Dean, who's a big favourite. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, I can't recall where I've actually told the story about Bob Dean. I may tell that later in this interview. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to hold you that because yeah. I'm a, I know Bob Dean. I've, I've interviewed him and he's a dear, dear man to me. Um, so I went to test my own intuition as things uh, started happening in my life that were um, slightly different to normal. 
And could I trust the people who are giving me this information? Um, and largely, uh, I came away with, yes, most of them were telling what they thought was the truth. Um, uh, but suddenly, from that time on, things changed um, from my point of view. But uh, from my perspective, I came away from awake and aware thinking, each person has got their own individual knowledge on each subject. I've got a, my own knowledge, plus all theirs as a whole package. If someone wants to talk about, uh, the, the only person I didn't know about was NASA Harriman, and I thought that, that particular two hours was absolutely fantastic, because I was learning something new, you know, and, yeah. and he, get, he delivers a, a high-level physics uh, in a way that the average person like yourself on physics could understand it. So I came away from that thinking, I have to do something. Should I write a book? Should I do this? Should I do that? And then as things tended to happen to me over the last uh, few years, you kind of get guided into a certain path. And Drake came along and I thought, that'll be interesting. Um, I'd like to be involved in that. And that led to joining what was Freedom Reigns, which quickly went into Universal Voice. Uh, yeah. Which quickly then... It's Freedom Reigns modeled <laughs> down, tragically, horribly. Yeah, yeah Freedom Reigns kind of went, uh, came and went very briefly. And then uh, Denise uh, took up the uh, gamut and ran with it with Universal Voice. And then we had the unfortunate fallout of Universal Voice of which I spent many, many hours on the phone, uh, long into uh, the morning hours, consecutive nights, trying to rescue mm. it all. In the end, it became impossible, and we had to do something different. And then Drake said to me, um, <laughs> typical Drake, he, he goes, he calls me up. I, I was, I said to what was then, I was then with uh, my, which is now ex-wife. He calls me up and said, I've got a feeling I'm going to get a call from Drake today. And then an hour later, the phone rang and I'm sure enough, it was Drake. Uh, he'd never spoken to me on the phone. And uh, he says, uh, um, I want you to set up a Facebook page. So I went, oh, right, okay. So uh, I said, oh, all right, we'll do this, do this, do this. But don't put it live yeah yeah no problem that's that's okay uh, uh we'll wait till you get home i was out at a party at the time i got home and he's already put it live and put the group in the wrong setting so we had to say all the eight, eight, 880 members who had already signed up oh my wow delete them all and then set the whole thing up again so uh <laughs> that was my introduction to uh, working closer with Drake. So, uh, and he goes, oops, sorry. <laughs> There's only Drake, can so. Right, exactly, yeah. And anybody that knows Drake knows that his temperament with machines is not good. Um, I've uh, yeah. conversations with Drake where it sounded like he was beating on the damn thing with a, with a, a sledgehammer. <laughs> Yeah, Drake and computers. Uh, Tom, you have to help me with this. Okay, well, and then you go, A, B, and C. No, no, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Drake, you can just press it. <laughs> you don't have to hammer yeah. it. It's classic, Drake. So, um, the page got set up on the Sunday, and then I was kind of encouraged to then do the radio show. Oh, I'm thinking... Someone with an English accent doing an American radio show, they won't understand me. And, um, for many years when I was younger, um, right up until probably uh, maybe 10 years ago, I had uh, struggled speaking. I talked very, very low and in a very mumbled voice. And so I'm thinking, you're not going to understand me, don't be able to hear me, you <laughs> oh, just try it. So, and then uh, you gain confidence. The first couple of shows was not fun. Um, 
when you're like counting the minutes until it ends in case anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, wrong. no, I've been there. <laughs> and then, and then you gradually you just become this kind of second nature and you forget. Well, it's always interesting because sometimes we're called to do things that are completely counter to our nature. Wow. <clears throat> I mean, while I've done radio off and on since I was a teenager and internet radio since its inception, I'm an introvert. I mean, you leave me alone, I, I get very quiet. I'm very withdrawn. I'm not a special butterfly. Yeah. And yet, oddly enough, we're the very people that turn out to be sometimes the communicators because I guess what we're supposed to do is pull all this stuff out of inside of ourselves yeah communicate whereas extroverts tend to communicate from the top of the head yeah whereas i think introverts come from an inner core place where communications is a little more genuine and i said to you when we were planning to do this interview that i distinctly wanted to do video even though i think sometimes video does not serve us well and the reason for that is because you're you are, and I'm not blowing smoke here, you're an authentic communicator. When I hear your voice, I hear the passion, I hear the sincerity, I hear how you are able to present things in ways that are very simple and humble and not self-aggrandizing, which is in this particular domain of internet media kind of refreshing. Uh, there's a lot of off-sized egos and hyperbole and grandiosity that goes on in internet media. But, you know, it just parallels mainstream media in terms of the egos and the fixtures that go along with it. And I wanted us to have an authentic, genuine conversation in this medium because of the things that you have to communicate. Yeah. And as we go along, we, we kind of push this out. But, you know, to kind of get to the place where people understood where you came from and your, your overall I want to I want to say political it's not political your stance what we're dealing with is a marriage between what I call the consciousness movement which has been around in some form since probably the 60s both in the US and Europe as well it came out of the um, the revolution that took place in the 1960s, and at that time we began to get writers and gurus, uh, for better or for worse, but people who began to push the boundaries of their own consciousness, their own reality stream, their sense of who they were, and I guess existentially who we are in terms of the universe. So we have that. <clears throat> then we have the emergence of the freedom movement, which kind of you know, began to coalesce probably in the late 1970s, 1980s, but really took off once the internet medium and before that, the shortwave medium as well, which was where I was exposed to it, came in. So we had all of these different threads coming together. And what is interesting is where we, where we arrived at the place where you are with universal voice and then cosmic voice really diverges in almost the same place where David Wilcock picked things up, coming in with this consciousness, um, this consciousness meme and at the same time bringing in, as he did so well, his financial tyranny writings and the writings exposing the inner workings of the cabal. How did you arrive at this? Did you, is this part of your evolution? Is it part of what you were born inside knowing about the world we live in? Um, there's a famous quote, everything is uh, upside down, everything is backwards. That is what I came in on because nothing appeared, nothing on this planet appears to be the correct way. Yeah. I felt that as a young child, uh, the way people uh, acted with one another, the way um, TV was presented. Um, you find out at, at a later date when you have a bigger understanding, once you go down the rabbit hole, and there is more than one rabbit hole, mm. <laughs> there's more than one yeah, there. It is. So, you know, that, that that's... To me, everything just appears uh, about this plan has appeared wrong. And then uh, once you start um, looking into things 
of everything you've been taught as being pretty much wrong, you then uh, you've kind of isolated because uh, we've got the herd mentality that, that the programming that the cabal have done over many, many years, probably uh, 70, 80 years in the US, and probably about 30, 40 years in the UK. I noticed the changes in the 70s, particularly in the education system. Um, um, whereas the, the, the US was started a lot earlier with the Ford Foundation um, and the Carnegie issue, and the, I think it was in the late 1920s where they were uh, Ford told Carnegie basically um, you either stop producing clever uh, scientists or engineers, otherwise we put your funding off. Because what they were doing is, is producing too many Teslas, mm. and that's not what they wanted. So uh, that program worked so well that it was rolled out into the education system in America and it worked so well that eventually um, it got to, in the middle 70s, they started introducing it into the UK as well and I noticed the change in what was my last year in school, um, thankfully for me and thankfully for the teachers as well, I think a lot of them are glad that I left. Um, the last year you could see the change in the text and how it was presented and they're talking about uh, you had to bring a calculator into a maths lesson, I'm thinking. Yeah, you know, that always seemed to be the attack. When I was, this goes back to when I was in school in the 70s, um, they brought in what was called new math, which really, when you look back on it now, it was really the forerunner of common core here in the United States. The new math was basically trying to change the way that um, we did fundamental mathematics, even division, multiplication, and then, of course, algebra. They completely screwed that up, which goes into exactly what you were talking about, because you can't go into the sciences without a strong background in fundamental mathematics and especially algebra. And so, yeah, I mean, this is the 1970s is when they're doing this. It was very obviously even at that time. I mean, I remember my father looking at my maths assignments and going, what the hell is that? My father, you know, was pretty good at math. He had gone through calculus and everything, even went to college, but his high school education was probably better than somebody from a university at that, that, that point in time. And so, you know, we understood that it was that. It was the changing of language over time. Um, we began to see the erosion in, in literature, in, in, in writing skills, communication yeah. skills as well. So it was a Western, you know, it, it was the, the, the Anglo-American establishment assault on cognitive abilities specifically aimed at the middle class, which is where most of this was emerging at the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's um, subtle programming. Um, I, I, I just, uh, school didn't resonate for me, um, I actually thought I knew, um, I knew a lot of things, but I just didn't understand where where that was coming from, um, and I went through high school and learned pretty much nothing, mm -hmm. five, five years of nothing. Yeah, five minutes, <laughs> exactly, uh, yeah. Um, that's the system we have in the UK and all the teachers are going you've got such a clever brain why aren't you using it more I said because what you're teaching is also rubbish your history's rubbish you now tell me I have to bring a calculator see I was very good at mental arithmetic people would give me large sums and I could do it in my head so mm -hmm. I didn't need to do workings out but not everyone, uh, everyone has different abilities, um, but what they were trying to, it's fine if you're trying to um, bring people up in a, in a system, but, uh, uh, you do have to have grading because everyone learns at a different level, but then if you set that level too low, and the whole lot falls, and that's basically what they've done uh, year after year, is just lower the bar. You know, when you look at the education um, exam paper, for argument's sake, in 1888, for a 13-year-old, it would blow most of the people out of the water. They wouldn't be able to cope with it because they haven't 
that's how far down the education system's gone. You know, you, uh, they left school at 13 and they're now leaving school at 18 and don't know as much as what that child probably did at nine. And then you have to go and learn on uh, on the internet. And I, I don't know how uh, we really need uh, on education to change the whole system because we have to take advantage of the technology um, in, uh, that's going to be useful. Just using technology is not going to help us. It has to be uh, done where it helps in some ways, but it allows the pro your own self progression in others. You know, um, I, I can't imagine um, a child going to being a child now going to school. Uh, you know, we uh, we didn't have all these game systems and mobile phones and internet. Um, we largely went and played out and you played football or you, you know, whatever sport you liked. Uh, now you've got uh, a wealth of uh, technology and entertainment and I can't imagine going sitting in class all day listening to a teacher reading from a book which is not teaching. Uh, that's reading from a book. It's, it, the old teachers knew the subject regardless whether they were teaching crap or not, they knew the subject. So they didn't need no uh, textbook to narrate the, to the class. You know, now you've got teachers who read by the book. That's not teaching to me. Um, uh, it's certainly uh, lacking in stimulus, um, which is what the problem I had at school. Um, some people are just content to just drift through. Um, to me, I have to be challenged. And if I'm challenged, I'll step forward and I've got an interest. I'll really step forward and put the whole lot into it. And uh, as you know, likes to do Cosmic Voice or this new foundation, you know, I've got an interest in something, uh, I'll throw 110% on it. If not, I also think that your best team, I'm sorry, step no, up. Um, I also think that your best teachers inevitably were the ones that not only knew their subject, were passionate about it. Yeah. Um, things that I loved the most, which were areas of music, drama, speech. I was, I, I guess maybe some of that's because I had incredible teachers in a couple of areas that taught me things. I mean, just doing what I'm doing now. I learned to speak as a result of taking a speech class. I, I, I did drama, I did music, performance arts. I learned how to do things that pulled me out of my comfort zone, but things I was passionate about, art and things like that. And as a result of that, that creates the spark to become a learner, to go out and learn to do things that later on you can be self-starting, initiative, uh, computers really were not a factor at the point where I was in school. I mean, we had, I think at that point we had a UNIVAC computer in the school, which was the old tape things, you know, punch card systems and things like that. Not very interesting, but what was interesting at that time was a Texas Instrument calculator that had floating point on it, which enabled you to do extremely advanced calculations, including logs and things like that. Yeah. Then, of course, computers, as we went into the late 70s and early 80s, began to emerge. When that happened, I got interested, and I started to teach myself programming. Mm. I had no background in programming, no background in anything except basic algebra that I could use to learn to form languages and stuff. But the point was that the education system didn't really address those things on a broad scale. Most of it was rote learning designed to actually kill the very subject that they were teaching. Yeah, well, the biggest thing is um, they uh, stopped critical thinking. Those yes. thoughts outside the box. Yes. You know, uh, do not think for yourself. Um, just listen and follow and repeat listen, follow and repeat. And they're basically engineering people and children into uh, robotic technology. 
which um, even the stuff we know is what uh, one particular faction's end goal and the transhumanism. So it, yeah. oh, it, it, the jobs are going to change where they just needed people to sit there and press buttons. So you don't really need to give people something that's going to stretch their brains. You just need to teach them to be able to go ding, ding, ding and press buttons either on a, on a computer or on a cash register at McDonald's or Burger King. And, and that's it. It's uh, not the way uh, society should be. You should uh, stretch each and every, each and every individual uh, tailored to what their needs are. You know, to me, why bother uh, putting a person through school who's not um, that way inclined? but is very clever at music or he might be very clever at mechanics or very clever at drama. Why don't you take them out of the school if they're not going to really achieve? And you know, by, and teachers know uh, by a certain age which ones are going to achieve and which ones not. Yes, they can be late developers, but we had a couple of examples in, in our school who were musicians and uh, quite famous groups at the time and the school system shut them down and one of those uh, who's a good friend of mine is now uh, not with us anymore because after uh, uh, the the band sort of split up and suddenly he's always on the streets homeless to taking drugs and in the end he decided to end his life mm. How much different would his life have been if the education system hadn't blocked him from going and doing what he wanted to do in life? Are we, you know, the point is, we've got to get to a point where is allowing people to do what they want to do and not corral them into the same systems of drudgery and boring jobs that we've got currently. Well, where was the mandate ever? established for the state to compel education in the first place to enforce it and then to dictate the standards of education now i don't know what it is in the uk in the united states as you know fundamentally there's absolutely nothing in our founding doctrines and there wasn't for at least the hundred first hundred and twenty years of the country that had any component to it all of quote public education hmm. um, that was the purview of the family and to a certain degree, the church as well, which was, which was setting up institutions. And I've said for a long time that the failures of our institutions go back to the failures of the mainstream of our culture, which is the family and the church, which was an institution at one time of education and culture as well, for better or for worse, because that's a separate argument. Mm -hmm. Government stepped in with compulsory education, and then they began to play with it. You know, I, John Dewey in the 1930s began setting up the standards for public education along a platform of basically the Communist Party plat manifesto, the platform to dumb people down, to make them compliant citizens, to educate them into being compliant citizenry rather than creating a liberal arts background and a focused education that gave people the opportunity to become developed thinkers, learners, philosophers, scientists, or even just really good workers, uh, people who had gifts in the industrial arts and things like that. We lost all of that in the course of this mandatory education because essentially a generation, I looked at it, I mean, my kids have looked at it this way, is what the hell am I doing? Mm -hmm. Somebody with introspection looks at themselves and they realize that they've got gifts, they know they have abilities, and yeah. yet that system doesn't address it. It, it doesn't allow for it because, no, it uh, you know, I think the, uh, the escalation um, was late 1800s and certainly uh, by the early 1900s. Uh, yep. with to the US mm. um, and you had the shenanigans to do what, what's now known as the Federal Reserve you know um, once they got in and they bought off uh, um, the criminal Congress at the time um, it, things really started to escalate because then once you've got control of the money <laughs> yeah. 
you can um, then uh, corral people who may not go along with the agenda into doing things that they wouldn't normally do. And, and you either play ball with them, otherwise they shut you down. And uh, I gave the example earlier with Ford's uh, shutting, threatening to shut down uh, Carnegie Hall. You either, you know, um, do the way we want it to go. Yep. Uh, otherwise, we'll cut off your funding. You know, we, we, really, somebody else around at the time should have then turned around to Carnegie uh, and says, well, I'll fund you. You go this way and let them go that way. But unfortunately, um, they've... Um, kind of perfected the system on every level they infiltrate every level they've been, you know they've then uh, steered and engineered and uh, pushed and cajoled us into this final uh, system which is uh, I'm pleased to know is uh, nearing its end but their end goal was uh, yeah. total power into the few and then they're going to go into the transhumanist agenda um, I'm of the belief that that uh, will not take place. Um, will they always be around? Probably. Will it be the um, the threat that's been posed to us over the last, particularly over the last uh, 10, 15 years? I would suggest not. I think there's sufficient people who have become aware, who are prepared to do something and say, no, this is not right. We have to return to the balance. Not everything is uh, of the U.S. government is bad, uh, but there's obviously a, a large elements that's not good. Uh, that has to be corrected, and maybe the original constitution uh, might be restored, but uh, can that be updated and improved upon? We should always be improving. Yeah. What they've done over the last hundred years is um, basically uh, ruin everything. Well, let's break that out for a minute. I mean, the, the, you know, because I know you and Drake on, on, on Cosmic Voice talk a lot about the Constitution. And I do it as well because I think referentially it's what we were given in this country. It was really what made us unique that we formulated founding documents that established certain core philosophical and human rights components. I mean, the Declaration of, of Independence... Uh, the Articles of Confederation, I, I think sometimes they get lost in, in the, uh, the noise about the Constitution, and there was certainly a great deal of controversy at the time about certainly the Bill of Rights, um, even the Constitution itself, and, and the way it was done, because it gave the appearance of creating something that later on became the monster we now call the federal government, which did not exist organically. Yeah. But Fundamentally, if we take the Constitution as a platform, we have to look at it as a document that was framed in another time with another historical context and, in fact, with a vastly different consciousness than we possess now in this era. Yeah. Technologically, organically, and conscious-wise, we're very different people than the, than the men and women of that time. Yeah. And, and so... On one level, and this will kind of bridge us over into talking about the foundation and the things that you're working on now, we probably need to work through a process that enables us to kind of redefine the, um, I guess, the, 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 the platform, the documents, or however we're going to define going forward a common government such as it is. I mean, it, it, even the basis of, of merging Americanism with capitalism was kind of a, a, an act of uh, bastardization. Yeah. When you go and you look into the history of uh, the writing of the Wealth of Nations, 1776, which coincided with the rise of the uh, Bavarian Illuminati, the American Revolution, leading into the French Revolution, the Industrial Revolution. We've had all these bloody revolutions, and yet people still want another revolution. And I keep saying, no, this time we need to take the R off of this thing. We need to go to evolution, yeah. but we do rapid evolution. 
Every, every revolution has been funded by yes. every single one of them. Every single war is funded both sides by the same uh, uh, group. I won't call them elites, because uh, they're far from elite. Um, these same yeah. uh, narrow-minded, non-evolving group of beings. And I said beings for a reason, because it's not just uh, us either. So. Uh, we have to um, start to learn to think on a, on a different way. We, it's, we do not want a uh, new boss, same as the old boss, with a little uh, few trinkets thrown in. We have to really consider of, of how we make the jump in evolution from a type zero to a type one civilization. I mentioned this uh, recently in the show. It's uh, we cannot continue uh, with the, our mode of operation. Uh, we can't de evolve uh, as a species while we're divided and conquered. And yes, that's down to um, the same uh, select few again. That doesn't mean to say that we have to comply with it. And um, that's the important thing going forward, is uh, we don't comply with their false system. They're playing a game, most of the TV, everything's on the TV is all part of theatre. You've got one politician saying this and another one says that, and then you reverse it the following day and hope that people don't notice. Yeah. And sadly, because of the attention spans, most people don't. It's all theatre and designed to distract you from uh, where you should be and what you sh uh, what you should think and what you shouldn't uh, shouldn't think and so we have to um, really start coming together uh, as people not as Americans or as uh, people from England or just people full stop because you know this uh, movement whilst it's it appears it's largely based only in America. It, it involves people all over the world, I keep saying that. Um, but America is kind of the focal point of the final battle. And that doesn't mean to say it's going to be all out war. As I don't believe we will get World War Three. It's been prevented before and it will be, get, be prevented again. So um, please don't be in fear of that because it will not take place. Um, but the people have uh, become um, far too much distracted uh, with work and general existing in life. You know, um, I spoke earlier today where uh, 30, 40 years ago, the husband generally went to work and he could f uh, fund himself, his wife, and his one, two, three, four, or even five children, or sometimes more. That's how I grew up. Yep. Now, uh, uh, then we had the feminist movement, which was nothing to do with supporting women. It was to do with getting women into the workforce and paying taxes so they can collect more money. And then um, th that would then set the stage for the next stage of their development, which was eroding the family. And now we've got a situation that um, borders on insanity from uh, from our perspective, where we've got two people working, sometimes uh, an elder child in, in the late teens also working to so just to provide the basics in life or just barely exist. That's not the way life should be. Well, and as a result of the stressors within the society, the social stressors, we wound up with something called um, single mom families, latchkey children, you know, remember this, I mean, in the 80s, that was a catchphrase, latchkey kids, kids that came home, mom was the sole supporter, and the kids came home, watched TV, and they were called latchkey kids, and the impact on the culture there, again, was a disintegration of, of, a, of a, a family structure, and um, the advancement of the government into our homes as a result of social services that, that began to, that's when you began to see the encroachment of social services into the homes on such a high level. Social and, services are part of the system. 
Yes, exactly. I work for social services back in the UK, and I was like um, a spanner in the works. <laughs> I'll bet. I'll bet. Seeing those gasoline, you can see what that. they're doing, and uh, the people within it think that they're, they're doing good work. Mm -hmm. I'm going. You're not seeing the programming. You're being socially engineered uh, because when when I was in, well, they were talking about um, uh, um, Olsen, the, the racist nature, and the UK has um, got a, uh, a reputation for being pretty racist. You know, even amongst the home countries, you know, the, the English don't like the Scots, and the Scots don't like the English. <laughs> yeah. So it's not, it's not just uh, they don't like Americans, or they don't like Canadians, or they don't like uh, people from Pakistan or India. It just uh, become a culture where we don't like we didn't like anybody. Uh, and if you don't like anybody else, ultimately you'll turn on yourself. And that's kind of what's uh, being done in the UK and America. You start turning on themselves. And um, once you start doing that, um, we're going down a very poor path. What I'm seeing uh, uh, that's so encouraging uh, over the last four or five years is the amount of people who are prepared to step forward and accept some of the information that's come out on the internet and they expand what I call the truth bubble because each person has a truth bubble. Some might uh, have it here and some might have it as far as the universe where they're open to all uh, potential possibilities. You know, if you're going to be uh, structured in what you're accepting, and that in, the information that you may need to go on to the next level of learning will not come to you. Once you open your truth bubble, that's why I, I particularly have learned so much in, in so many different, uh, over a period of time, because I've, I've let myself be open to the information. Some of it I may have read, and I'm thinking this is uh, pure BS. Somewhere you'll find a little gem it might be only might only be one paragraph, and that all will you take the learn to take that paragraph and put it with the, with the stuff that you've already got, and that's how you evolve through through the learning curve. But you, you get some people who won't discuss for argument's sake about ETs. Mm -hmm. That's fair enough. But then you you uh, you can't talk about um, cabal and the elite and the one percent and not include them you're missing the key components. Uh, some people don't want to talk about religion. It's a very testy subject. I try to avoid it uh, because <laughs> it, it never, it doesn't achieve anything because you can only give people the information and it's up to the, 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 the person you're telling whether they accept it or not. You can't force it down their throat. They either accept it or they don't. If they don't accept it, that's fine. But they've retained what you've said in their consciousness. And then somebody else comes along and says something similar and they go, hmm. And somebody else can, what they'll find is that people will come one after the other to basically tap this person on the shoulder who didn't believe at first and go, ah, thing he was saying, talk, telling me about this and he was telling me about that and she told me about that. And eventually expands and then suddenly you're getting a whole new layer of information that makes the picture even bigger mm -hmm. and as you go on um, you think oh I've got the bigger picture now and then more information comes forward and <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind of like at what, which point does my head actually explode from all of this but, but that's you know in a lot of ways Thomas you and I are kind of we're, we're kind of a high wire act because we're doing this in front of an audience you know, I've been out there since, well, officially since 2003 when I went on radio and then onto the internet. And I've done huge leaps over the years in terms of where I came from, you know, even in terms of what I believed. Yeah. And what I learned was that the more open I became to the information that was given to me, even even though there's pushback, you know, for a long time, I did not want to talk about ETs. 
And then there came a point where I was confronted with it face on where I no longer could ignore this because I could no longer ignore in myself no. the reality of this whole thing. Yeah. Um, I had conscious memories, but the other side of it was that there was this unconscious thing that was also opening up. There's something that happens to us when we go, get older. Yeah. Um, memories start to emerge. Yeah. And when I began to go down this road, this was probably one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever done. I think, you know, I, I think of as a bad analogy, but I'll use it because some people understand it. It's kind of like coming out as a gay person. Well, coming out as an experiencer is very much like that. It's a high wire act because you have now put out in front of people something that is so foreign to common human experience the way we yes. perceive it that there is actually a stigma to it. I've said for a long time the real stigma in this culture is the ET experience because even the people that talk about it do so the most part and god love them some of the people that i've interviewed over the years and some of the people who are out there on the internet are some of the bravest souls i've known in terms of what they've revealed they've risked revealing things about themselves that most people don't want to talk about and no. this, is, this is really for me this is the cutting edge in terms of where we're going because it goes into everything else when we start to talk about the et now we can begin to talk about the secret space program we can talk about MK Ultra, all of these black ops programs, my labs, we can talk about the black science and the hidden technology and the hidden hand behind the cabal because all of this stuff is connected. Yes, it is. Um, is it a good analogy? Um, I uh, held back and held back. I explained earlier about the um, common, uh, the integrity part because it's important to me. Um, I, uh, you've gone through the same process, well, is this real? And then uh, you get your little message going, is what you see in front of you real? <laughs> you know, what's real? What is real? Yo. And perception is one thing, and then, here's the, here's the real Rubicon to cross, then you've got to start to trust your own inner knowing. And this is... This is real key, and I know you've talked about this, we've talked about this in some of our private conversation. Yes. At some point, when you get to the edge of this reality stream, when you go, okay, I think some things happened here, I think there's some things going on, there is a period where you're very disassociative, where you go through cognitive dissonance at a rapid level, and you're like sorting through memories and sorting through, and there's a sense of doubt there's a sense that your reality is no longer the same, and there's a sense that you are no longer the same as well. So you know, um, it, it, uh, the problem being is um, another one of the social engineering programs is um, we've all been corralled into thinking that it's important what people uh, around you think about you. Um, and we all do it. Um, well, I don't want to say this because uh, it might offend or upset, or they might think I'm nuts, or uh, you know, or I'm losing it. And um, it's another control system, but the control system this time is in your head, not theirs. Yes, it's kind of pushed that way and programmed that way, but only you can end that system. And you say, well. Hang on a minute, I've had these experiences. I, do, I don't need somebody else to tell me what exists and what doesn't when I've already seen it or experienced something. And I say to this uh, because I, uh, me and Chloe help people in the background who have had these experiences. Um, you know, some like to come forward and we'll tell their story a lot more and come forward and see, maybe that's what we've encouraged. You get one to come forward that gives the courage to, to the other person to come forward because then, and then it snowballs. And like Shane says, you know, if more people come forward with their stories, it would make it appear as though the people who have already come forward are not as special because we're not special, it's just right. a different right. experience to somebody else. And this is, uh, again, uh, 
the collective thinking or they think that's different because they've interacted with this or they've interacted with that no 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 you know it's um, um people often forget about the journey the person's been on they only think of in in their terms how difficult it is i'll use the analogy used how difficult a journey is or on how mentally stressful has it been for that gay person who's had to come out and admit to his his parents i'm gay you know um how difficult is someone coming out and says i've uh interacted with ets or i've had experiences i've seen this or i've seen that or i've done this or i've done that um some people tend to forget that uh the the personal journey um, well it's a sense of isolation that that occurs because you you have now separated yourself from what's called the consensus reality stream yeah. you know and you've gone through it i've gone through it where not only do you have the doubt that comes from the external but it's inflicted upon you internally as well because you constantly doubt certain things about your own experiences and these are key experiences because they go into the awakening process as well when you talk for instance about the things you knew as a child that's the same thing you know i had a knowing about things i had psychic abilities that terrified me um yeah. to the point where i would have done anything to shut it off and did um but this is the problem it's not because um uh, you are not allowed to process it in your own because you're frightened to then um tell somebody else was there we've all been consistent that's being nutty but that can't exist you know uh you've seen ghosts or you see any ets or you know or any anything paranormal the above frankly all of the above <laughs> you just got this the switch off button straight away you know it's uh, uh you know often hear people and there's a, a key line you know, when you mention uh, et and most people who listen to this will now laugh when you mention et that the standard comeback line because that's what they've been programmed to say oh you, you mean the little green men from mars and then the the, the awkward laugh that's then discounting the information and this is uh, um, some of the really uh, bad things that's been done to people is the, is the programming side. I mean, most people say, oh, well, I haven't been programmed. But then when you start to break down the, the answers and response to certain subjects, you'll realize that you are. And it's been fairly heavy in this country. This country for the programming has been um, uh, the worst bar none. UK is not uh, yeah. is, is, is fairly bad. Uh, the, the, they've done more damage on a on a social level with the people, um, with the you know the corralling uh, the people into becoming more isolated, and that's gone on a lot longer than the US, where basically it's uh, everyone look after themselves and. Uh, basically to help up with everybody else you know that that has to change we have to go back to a system where um, it's going to be difficult because now we've got these big cities and the, and the towns are sprawling further and further out but um, the best um, terminology I've heard over my time is communalism uh, that came from Tanath one of the ones we used to have on the show uh, where basically it's just a matter of everyone joining in together and working together for the common good not uh, to enrich your own lives let's enrich everyone's life why do, does it have to be that uh, one has this and the other has that why not all have that and yes that we will be termed communism but it's not well, the conditioning behind communism was the false premise that what was presented as communism was communism. What was presented to us was basically uh, a soft form of fascism for a while that eventually turned brutal. 
in the 20th century. You know, the early writings of Marx and Engels were obviously modified, but yet at the same time, they themselves were orient, oriented around a view of the state as being the dominant entity rather than the individual. In the United States, that wasn't going to fly because the United States has long been the empire of the individual. But that's an illusion because most people here are just as collectivist as they are in Europe. Yeah. You know, so we have the egotism that goes with the individual, but none of the priorities that would go with people who go, look, I'm a unique individual, but I understand that I need to work with other people. As a collective. Our, strength, it, our strength lies in what you and I are doing, what you do within CV, what I'm doing with some of the groups that I'm working with. It's to yes. begin to set up small organic groups of people that work together for specific purposes yes. and to fan that out and to begin to connect people organically which i think is the only way we can do this i don't yes. think we can do this by toppling the system which no. was a question we, uh, go ahead please we have to build from the ground up we have to rebuild ourselves um the the way we think and the way we operate uh, currently is not conducive to an, an evolved society. Right. Uh, so we have to uh, do a lot of inner work, which a lot of people won't look at um, because it brings out um, parts of, of the shadow side that they're uncomfortable with. You know, you'll probably find uh, the ones that um, uh, say, oh, I'm not listening to ETs. You'll probably find that quite a few of them have had experiences, but they're not ready to bring right. it forward. Yeah. And this is, um, we've been talking about this on the show, is getting people to uh, do their inner work. Uh, what are they concerned about in, in themselves? Uh, are they too egotistical? Or are they very self-centered and service to self rather than service to others? You know, and uh, what parts of you do you like and what parts you don't? And then work on the ones you don't because too many have just basically mashed off the parts you don't like and just carried on. And as uh, they've carried on, the rolling stone of the shadow side is rumbling into their main life and then depression sets in and all kinds of other uh, things that's not helpful to that particular human being. Um, we were meant to be uh, joined together. Uh, if you all understood where we came from, or origin from, uh, you, you would understand that on a better level. Yeah. All yeah. Cre creative for nothing. So, uh, a lot of the issues we faced is uh, where they've devalued and just um, run humanity into uh, class themselves as worthless savages or, you know, just have no higher value. We're always giving our a power away to somebody else. If it's not, um, in my perspective, some gods or gods, we're giving it away mm -hmm. to politicians you know seeing right, right. Uh, exactly. some of the things on the tv and and uh, the uh, veracity they're going at it i'm thinking these people are no different to you or i and yet you have this idolatry worship of these politicians who uh, are going to do uh, put you under the same poor conditions that you've had the pre last four years the previous four years and the previous four years and it's, it's you know why do keep repeating the same uh, mistakes? Let's do something different. Let's um, to join together. It has to start small because uh, you can't uh, take down a system from the top. We haven't got that ability. We, uh, it's just too much. The system is way bigger than uh, most people realize um, or could even understand or grasp. So it's about people joining together from the, the, a base level and building it up and build out and building out. And then we eventually you'll find it will, by the people being together, it will erode their system. 
because once people all get together, black, white, Latino, it doesn't matter, once people get together, the system of control that they have can no longer exist. It's not possible because once the people all unite, that system uh, and that conscious level will go out to the creator and they will return it back and we will get the system that we all want, which is a lot more fair, balanced, abundance of basic needs. And hopefully uh, we start moving away from the uh, materialistic system and consumerist system that we've been uh, all bought into. Uh, pardon the pun, uh, we've all bought into. That's basically eroding our consciousness because you have to have a better house or a better car or a better job or more money and all that is taking you away from who and what you really are because it's you're providing a false image for your next door neighbor and putting yourself in the whole heap of debt to boot. Yeah. You know, playing yeah, the system's fed off of our worst impulses. Yeah. I'm not against the idea that people who contribute on a, on a higher level, um, people who are inventive, people who are creators, be rewarded for what they do. This is not about leveling no. the playing field. No. no. In fact, no. Let's, let's phrase it, rephrase it differently. Why do we have a playing field in the first place? Why can't we all just do what we do and synergistically come together. Mm. I can tell you that it requires many hands to run a ship. It requires many hands to run a factory or do anything that we do. And the real genius is the person that manages to put together an organization that works well. As somebody who's worked in corporate America, worked in organizations, I can tell you that the best people I saw were leaders who knew how to deploy people creatively, yeah. make them feel rewarded for what they were doing, and mm -hmm. enhance who they were as a result of that experience. That's not the culture in, the, in America right now. The culture in America is vampiric, it is parasitic, and it is sucking the life out of our culture. Yes, it's the same in the UK. Um, dog eat dog, we call it in the UK. And um, eventually, um, if we continue down that path uh, of doggy dog, there'll be none left, because basically that's what they what the, their plans are: is that we all divide and conquer, divide and conquer, divide and conquer, divide and conquer, and and then there's nothing left, you know. And if I see people often getting so angry on on the pages about what, why are we allowing this? Well, we we allow this on a collective level. Each mm -hmm. and every one of us is yeah. responsible that we we are in this mess, and that bothers some people. Well, I didn't do this. Well, well collectively you did. And uh, if uh, we want a constitution in the U.S., if we want the Bill of Rights, if we want a uh, asset-based currency. Um, if we want the US government returned to what it is and not a corporation, then we have to um, come together as one and demand that's what we want. Once the people do that, then we will have back what we want. There are people inside these organizations who are also tired of the tyranny. Yes, they've played the game, but there's a lot of them inside who now realize it's gone way too far. They've seen um, or had access to some of the future plans, and maybe they realize that they didn't really have the ticket either. They're just under the illusion. They've been lied to at, on every su uh, successive level. They've been lied to, and this compartmentalization goes far deeper than most realize. Yeah. And so uh, some of them now, um, I don't give figures or numbers, but uh, there's a number within those um, groups that have now decided uh, they can't um, put their name and their efforts and their conscience to what they're doing and have stepped out or are now helping behind the scenes, whether it be with, with finance or general help or both. You know, that's um, how the oil industry has been taken down. Yeah, that's an interesting thing, isn't it? To see how 
um, all of a sudden, the, the ever-increasing gasoline oil prices have just somehow magically stabilized. And, you know, a couple of people that I know, I, I said a couple of years ago, watch these oil prices. They are a harbinger of things to come. But that was two years ago that I said that, and it wasn't anything other than the practice of watching economics and understanding that this was a dynamic that we've not seen before, not since the 1960s, since the Arab war oil embargo in 1970, what, 72, 73, 74, somewhere in around there. Um, we've had a stranglehold between the U.S. Arabian holdings, OPEC and all of those, those groups, but now something has broken. And the economy is a very different animal right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's go into some of the aspects of what you announced a few weeks ago on Cosmic Voice and the message that you're getting out now, because you have a rather substantial, I'll just say, offering on the table to begin a process that kind of formalizes the things you and I have talked about in the, the, the course of this, this talk so far. Yeah. Uh, which part of it? There's about three, that one. Uh, there's the Intel side, there's the foundation, and mm -hmm. yeah. just roll anywhere you want to go with that. Uh, let me let me see. We'll start with one f uh, first, and then we'll come to the foundation. Um, well, the the Intel side is something that I've been involved in. With um, Drake's already mentioned that he's been involved in. There's some of us um, that have come along. And the groups have been working behind the scenes and correlating information. Um, and uh, in the end, I thought I've been asked to do this foundation, and people are going to ask, "Why him?" Um, because I asked the same question myself <laughs> at first, and then me higher self is going, "That's what you asked for. You wanted something to." Uh, get the American people back on board again and all working together and uh, yeah, an abundance of the basics. And so that's kind of what the foundation will, will be about, is putting people um, a hand up rather than a hand out. So I thought, um, should I put out um, at the same time some of the knowledge that I know that I've kind of kept uh, hinted at on the show? or um, should I uh, remain in the background? So I thought, well, no, I'm going to, people are going to want to know a whole lot of answers and the attention it's going to get. And so I'd sooner be out and open um, whilst preserving uh, the safety of others and the safety of th things that are ongoing. And so I chose to release a certain amount of, of uh, information revol involving around our history uh, who we are, where we came from, and um, the things that have gone on in the past, that life is not as we know it, and it certainly isn't uh, from uh, so many uh, different levels. No, 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 it's not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and you think uh, Star Trek is science fiction? Mm, boy. Way beyond that, trust me. Yeah. So, um, it's, uh, I decided that I would uh, come out a bit more and start saying some of the stuff that I knew or some of the stuff that I experienced or some of the stuff that we had uh, correlated together on what the, the, the war that's going on outside of uh, this planet and on it and below it. And so um, that was a, kind of a big step for me. I thought I'd sooner get that out of the way. I expected some kickbacks because it's different from other people's narrative. And some of it was quite harsh. Um, well, particularly to do with the planetary reset side. People will find that rather hard to believe. And I understood that. Um, it's a lot um, to take in. But the gist of it is going back many, many thousands of years is um, this universe had uh, a flaw in it. 
and some will call, call it the fractal virus and others will call it something else but uh, and it was uh, evil or dark and dark energy so there's a various name but either way you had the floor where it allowed the dark side to prosper at the expense of the light and um, the understanding was it had gone too far and as people think well you know you can't have dark. Uh, well, you can't have light if, you, if, you, if there is no dark because you're not going to know the difference. So there's always a balance. And this is where we've kind of lost, not only on a universe level, but on a planetary level and on a personal level as well. We've lost that balance. And um, the directive was that um, at the Galactic Council had decided to pull this universe altogether because it was affecting uh, the multiverse. Um, a select number of uh, individuals thought they could uh, come here and try and fix it and erase the elements of the dark that perpetrated through this whole universe and slowly but surely it went from 87% which is what it was at, uh, at its worst point um, and we're getting nearer and nearer the balanced figure they will always exist but what um, some will say, oh, uh, you know, you should, uh, there's elements who want to wipe the dark out. Well, no, why, let's educate. Let's help them understand there is a better way. You know, um, and a lot of meetings have taken place through a number of different species. Uh, along those lines and some largely some of them have been successful uh, not all but um, where you know this it's a vast universe why do we all, always have to um, trample over one species just to improve the level of just one species themselves why can't we all share it you know there's uh, seven billion on planet earth you know we could all fit in Texas and so the idea that it were overpopulated is also rubbish. You're only, it's the corralling of resources is yet again perpetrated by these same people who have gone through many, many uh, galactic systems and done the same thing. Slowly but surely it's being pulled back and um, there's been lots of things, as you will know, Randy, that's been done both on the ground, below it, and above us, um, to correct And in it. the galactic system as well. I mean, we have uh, 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 a bunch of space rocks out there that appear to have been a planet that was destroyed by one of these civilizations. So, you know, there's a lesson yes. there. Yes, well, uh, uh, you refer to Tiamat? Or, or, yeah, we call it Tiamat, yeah. 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 yeah, some would call it Maldak, and some mm -hmm. call it yeah, Tiamat. Um, my understanding, uh, that's where most of us who uh, who are incarnated here now came from. And I actually liken that to being a galactic Atlantis, which I think is part of that latent ancestral memory that we all, well, some of us certainly are very close to, the sense of profound loss of the civilization that at one time we were a part of. Yes, and the... Um it was decided that they would kind of erase the memory of the trauma of that because it was so traumatic. And so we were kind of put in little boxes or little pods or... But some of us remember. Yeah, or closed off, but yeah. uh, that is, uh, thankfully, there was sufficient who did remember. And uh, there... Um, coming together in greater numbers by the day, uh, certainly by the week. But, um, Racial yeah. memory is actually key to what we're talking about too because it, it, it is the binding force that is coalescing us. We're not going to let this happen again. We're not letting this planet get destroyed. We're not going to allow ourselves to be cannibalized, tyrannized, and vampirized any longer. No, that, that, uh, I have... Uh, um, I don't believe that will take place. No, I don't either. Light, light will uh, prevail, um, yeah, and then we return to a balance of sharing. You know, um, 
Look, there's quite a, I've spoken to quite a number of people um, who remember Tiamat and um, the story of that. Um, I don't personally have memories of that, and mine uh, are further afield. But um, yeah, it's encouraging that people are now waking up the latent memory. It is there, it's in each and every one of you providing you access it you it's like your dna your dna is all around you if you learn to harness your energy you can activate more and more of your dna once you start activating more and more of your dna yeah. you will then start accessing uh, your back memory and um, that actually is one component of the modern war. I mean, that was the point of the Human Genome Project and all of the other things. They knew about, look, they had DNA mapped a long time ago, long before the, the Genome Project. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, we know that because of certain intelligence agency records that have been leaked over the years that go back to the nexus of the CIA black operations and stuff. They've been using DNA to identify subjects in, in government projects since the 40s. They've actually been using, we'll just say, reincarnational records as well to identify subjects. And I believe this goes into the ET thing as well, because like I said, you know, it does. Point by point, it's all connected. And this is a, this is a really steep hurdle for people to, to grasp. Yeah, it is. Um, and by the way, we have plenty of time. We're just going to go, we'll go uh, right to the wall for two hours. Seeing is um, seeing is believing, but then people can see things and still not believe it. You know, we look. Like, yes, like you're looking at the sky <laughs> and you're going, "What's that?" And then you're going, "I don't see anything." Yeah. Okay, then you just go, "Okay, from now on, I'm going to keep my goddamn mouth shut." Yeah, yeah. Well, it's again, it's that inner fear. If you've worked on on your inner self, what other people think of what you're saying uh, becomes irrelevant because you have to stand in your own sovereignty, uh, and we all have to do that on an individual level. And then we, uh, once you've achieved that, uh, the next state of development is spreading out. And this is uh, kind of what's been going on uh, um, on all levels, right throughout the universe, um, where m people have been helped to uh, evolve. We've we were evolved a long time ago, but mm -hmm. we we've gone through programming that's uh, lessened our abilities and shortened our life and uh, made us sick. You know, um, we all had the have a latent ability to heal ourselves. Yeah. Big Pharma won't tell you that because they want you to go and buy their expensive drugs that don't work. Right. You know, um, they don't want people thinking they have the power within themselves because each and every person has that ability. It's just sitting dormant. You know, there's lots of people think, I can't do this. Well, why can't you? Have you thought about it? Go and do it. I never thought I would become a radio show host, you know, but I did. Um, I never thought I'd be involved in half the groups I was involved in, but I did because I kept expanding. I kept going with the flow and going with the flow and pushing and pushing and pushing. And then you reach uh, a point, a critical point where everything, you just, it's the aha moment. Yeah. Where... Right, okay, I've had all these experiences, I've had all this research, I've got all this knowledge. Um, do I just keep absorbing it like a sponge? Or do I now have to do something with it that's going to make the real changes? And this is, well, Foundation came along at a very good time because I was getting um, kind of edgy about doing three hour shows each week. Uh, repeating largely the same things, answering largely the same questions. It's nothing against the members. It's just uh, you get uh, to a point where you think, well, are we just going to sit here week after week absorbing what the Kabbalah are doing to us, or are we going to actually do something and fight back? Um, and so 
my uh, my pleas uh, went out. Uh, I wanted to do something uh, more of more value, um, and it came back. And so um, I was approached to do this uh, foundation. So so far, so good. Do a little bit of the story about that, what that entails. Like I said, we have we have at least another thirty minutes on the, on this. So let's just you know go ahead. Well, um, I was approached um, by a group of people, but I mainly spoke with one who um, put forward um, a load of information. Some of which I knew, and some of which I didn't. Um, I was shown certain systems that I thought I knew, but I didn't. Um, and it kind of um, evolved over, I think that's the first weekend I spent 21 hours on the phone. So uh, I'm inquisitive because uh, that's in my nature. Like I said earlier, it's all about integrity to me. And then someone turn up and go, well, we want you to do this. And you think, well, what's the catch? You know, that was my first question. And why me? And uh, it's saying, that's what you asked for. That's what you asked for. <laughs> so I right, okay. And so uh, we gained a, a, a trust between us both. And uh, they answered all the questions that I wanted answered. And um, basically, the foundation is going to uh, be operated mainly by me, but it'll be uh, what will come for me is a team of people that are going to decide where these uh, donations and they'll be coming from people all over the world, but there'll be bigger donors putting in um, larger amounts and it'll go to the ordinary people. It's not going to enrich rich CEOs like myself, you know, um, I'm not interested in that. I live a very simple life, very simple needs and basic needs. So um, I'm not that way inclined. But what I am inclined is is getting people back on their feet. So what will happen is once the funds uh, start coming in, and they've already come in, um, we've collected um, $6,000 in two weeks, some of which has gone to pay for the setup of the foundation. I was a bit reluctant at first to spend that because it's not my money, it's their money. Um, so I, I wanted a few more questions asked before I went ahead with that and uh, the answers were were good and so we, we went forward with it. So we're now uh, setting up the foundation and um, we've got the name. Uh, I hope to be able to announce the name this week. Um, which will be, I'm we're just waiting for that, the confirmation on that before I announce it. And it's got to be um, registered as such. Yeah, so, people don't understand that, you, you know, this is, uh, it's an entity, so you have to make sure that you have... Yeah, your, yeah I, uh, I'll be disappointed if I don't get that name. It has a double meaning, so uh, people will know when, uh, when we release that this week. So, um, and then the foundation is getting set up, and then there's... Uh, you know, it's so heartening the help I've been offered um, from members of CB uh, and, and further afield. Um, there's a website being processed currently. Um, someone offered to do it completely free, a free of charge, um, which again helps get things done quicker. So we thank that person. And then um, we've got someone to do the security on the website. Um, and offered their services and so many other people have offered to I can do this and I can do that and so that's the way it, it's all going to be about everyone um, I've said it before it, this this foundation is not about me it's about providing um, uh, or rebuilding America from the ground up over the last number of years we've tried to topple it from the top down it can't be done well, it can be done, but it would, it would lead to war and destruction. So we have to rebuild uh, within and around their system. And initially it will be, uh, like I said, donations from the people, which uh, 
uh, you know, has been so encouraging to me um, that they've entrusted me to do this and they've given up their hard earned money to chip in for a greater good. And um, that's really heartened me. So that will drive me on even more to, you know, we get the proposals in and once, once the funding comes in, we get the proposals in, there'll be a committee that decides on those proposals and then the money will then go out to ordinary people. It's not going to big corporations, it's going to the average person down the street who may be short of a grocery bill or they, they may have a dental bill that, that's outstanding and they can't pay it. If the, the uh, committee passes it, that person will get that money, you know, or we then get involved in the bigger projects. Um, maybe I came up with a few ideas about expanding organic farming. Give the farmers the opportunity to, uh, re you know, restart organic right throughout the states. It's what people. Yeah, want. yeah, this is real critical. You know, it, this is it's what people want, but people can't afford. Well, if you can uh, provide uh, help and support with or funds with that would make the the organics cheaper, then people, if they got a choice, they will go and buy the organic, and then so then they're eating better and uh, getting more vitamins and nutrients in their system, which to put out the need for the, the phony drugs that were being pumped into us on a daily basis. It's frightening here compared to the UK, uh, the levels of um, drugs. Um, you know, I've worked in, a, a, in um, property management and I've also done work in uh, remodeling homes. So I've done a variety of jobs um, and you know, you he ended up to having to paint a bathroom and they're emptying the medicine cabinet out and I'm like, oh my God. In the UK, we might have one bottle of anodine as a, or, or paracetamol and I'm just seeing it. <laughs> you, know, you, look at, you look at, and I've seen a lot of this, uh, especially yeah. older people. Some of them have these little boxes that they bring out each morning with their pill compartments, yeah. all carefully specified with what pill they're supposed to take and what quantity at what time and how often. And you're going, oh my God, you're consuming all of these pharmaceutical drugs, all of which have massive counterindications, as most people who watch pharmaceutical commercials on TV know. These drugs not only interact badly with your own body chemistry, but with themselves. At a horrendous level, you don't, you can't predict it, and so again, you know, this is this toxic culture that we live in, and to reboot it, we have to go back to something that has a natural, organic order. And you look at organic food, Thomas, and all they're doing is selling us something that 50 years ago was groceries, but now they call it organic, and now it's like. $10 so, for a head of lettuce or some ridiculous yeah. price for tomatoes or apples or something. Yeah. Um, but then if, um, if you can uh, prov provide the, the farmers um, the, the means with which to restart it and then set up the farmers markets and make it the culture so we've been altered into a culture of that we all go to Walmart or we all go to Publix. Or, yeah, big box consumerism. You know, and it's all convenient. So let's all buy in the one store. Well, no, uh, sometimes it's not. Um, in fact, most times it's not. You know, and uh, time is so short for everyone. Um, but that's uh, how we end up uh, going and following their system. Mm -hmm. Think different. You know, uh, do we really, uh, is it worth the extra five minutes or an extra dollar to go and buy something that's uh, going to be beneficial to you long term? And uh, that, uh, that way of thinking has to come in uh, going forward. That's uh, how I, I will be pushing things on our show where in the coming shows about people thinking different because we have to start thinking on a different level than we are currently. We have to stop um, attacking each other and we have to start um, making each other improve the way we interact 
and uh, and discourse and work with each other because it's so important if we're going to evolve and really progress humanity the first thing we have to do is forget boundaries and countries and and color and race and gender and all come together and once the people do that then the people will demand from the countries that we um we country level uh, then learns to share the resources also once we're all sharing the resources you know it does oil in north dakota does that belong to the united states of america no it belongs to every person in the world yes you compensate the miners or, or the drillers for removing it but it doesn't belong to the united states of america this is why we've had so many wars with land grabs is that it, these same people with all all the funds are just collecting everything at the at the expense of the local populace you know why are they, why have we got millions of people in africa starving when they've got more minerals than the rest of the world put together because of these same people it's greed 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 well no, no we have to stop that and we can only stop that on an individual level and then joining up with everybody else and this will be, this will the, the foundation what will be about is educating people to start working together and looking after each other because that's all we have at the end of the day you can't rely or keep demanding from the same system that's been trampling all over you for the last 80 90 years to fix it they're not interested in fixing it. They'll only be interested if the people corral together in a non-violent way and say, tell you what, enough is enough. That's it. And it's that simple. And that's how it all ends. Because your conscious level will go out into the cosmos and will come back and go, now they want it. You have the issue over disclosure. Um, uh, the ET disclosure, disclosure with the small d, uh, in my opinion, happens to happen before capital D. Uh, oh. Are people uh, really ready for for um, capital D disclosure, which is DT? I would love to turn around from a personal point of view and say, yes, we are. Collectively, I don't think we are because too few are, have expanded their truth bubble to accept the narrative that's contained yeah. in the field. That's something I think we agree very much about. Um, the litmus test is really how on an individual basis do people take this? And the answer is that those of us who talk about this are still fringe, we are still open and subject to scorn, although I, I'm happy to say that that's improved over the years. Yeah. And even the mainstream, if you look at media, I think there is a certain fluxing process that's going on that's seeding into humanity this acceptance, but it's being done on kind of a cartoon level. But the, yeah. the concept of disclosure at that level is, I think, that's something we will go towards organically, just like we're talking about moving the culture organically, that it's grassroots, that, you know, really we've been in disclosure and some of us have had disclosure our whole lives anyway on some level. Yeah. You know, anybody that wants to go online and look it up for, again, we have to be very careful because yes. there has, you know, been so much seeding into the internet of false information, false paradigms, imposters, actors, shills, and whatever. The but, latest one being flat earth. Who is it again? I said the latest one being the flat earth. Oh, yeah, yeah, the flat earth thing was that. Right, so. right out of one of the agencies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it was designed to create more cognitive dissonance around something that again demands a greater understanding of where it is we exist exactly yeah you know, most people don't understand this they, the, the flat earth concept itself reflects back to the three-dimensional aspect of our own thinking yeah. and a construct that goes beyond three and even 4d in terms of 
who we are and what we actually exist in in terms of space time dimensionality yeah these are all big subjects that require minds that are willing to take on things that right now are not mainstream no. in no. terms of and, and i want to address this is because we've got some time here to kind of go into some of the nuts and bolts first off obviously some things have shifted even on cosmic voice um Originally coming into this in 2012, I interviewed Drake in June of 2012 at that time. The David Wilcock interview had come out, and Drake was very actively promoting the idea that we were probably real close to where we would see the military begin to move, and that, you know, the cabal government would be taken down, if necessary, I guess with a fair amount of force. Um, Wilcock himself was intimating at that point mass arrests, the closing of financial systems, the, the, the currency revaluation, um, the idea that basically we were going to go to some sort of new econo economy system. And obviously, you know, here we are down the road four years later. Some things have changed. A lot of people have gotten restless. A bunch of people have bolted. Other yeah. people have just taken this paradigm and turned it into an excuse for anarchy or some other mob rule type thing. But what's really occurred is kind of a logical progression from what Drake talked about in 2012 and what David Wilcock was writing then into where we're now with this model of the foundation and the idea that organically we're going to do grassroots roots type, type organization. Your sense, your take on how all of this is has evolved and you think will evolve as well. Well, I remember the interview with Drake, and um, I thought it over. And I remember making comments on Universal Voice at the time that I didn't think it was practical. Um, but Drake was told by certain high-level people that it was, and that things were going to be completed in 90 days. Now, what I found out at a later date is the ones that were involved in that um, were heavily infiltrated and suddenly um, disbanded. And then they also became aware of, um, an, let's just say, an extinction level event weapon, which was unbeknown at the time to the people that were involved in that takeover. You know, people will say, oh, it's a coup. Uh, and I'll remind people, it's not a coup. It's a hostile corporate takeover. A coup is only to do with a government. The US doesn't have a government, and we haven't had since the Bretton Woods Agreement in 46. So it would, be, it would have been a hostile corporate takeover. And um, those in planning became aware of um, some very nefarious uh, means of um, weaponry that are beyond most uh, scientists' understanding. Plasma tech and all kinds of energy beams and all the Star Trek, Star Wars, all rolled into one. Um, and so had that took place, um, a full-scale war would have broken out in the US and around the world, which would have um, led to 80% of both sides being wiped out. Well, uh, freedom to me is about preserving the all, not just uh, win at all costs. You know, you have to uh, balance it. And so what it was found then is the infiltration was a, a lot further in, not only uh, on a ground level, but the infiltration took place uh, above us as well. A lot of the so-called galactic federations, uh, some of them were not, not correct uh, to begin with, uh, that were being passed off as light, uh, were not. Mm. And they were infiltrated. And some of these savior programs that were coming in, they were going to come in with biospheres and all kinds of other stuff with healing machines and blah, blah, blah. It turned out, um, actually, that some of them biospheres were people don't like this but they were harvesting machines death camps basically yeah and um this has been going on 
on this planet over many thousands uh, of years where the uh, humanity has been harvest, harvested, um, and sold, uh, bought and sold and traded off around uh, the solar system. Uh, again, this will new, be new to many. Um, and traded as a commodity. Now, um, the reason being is because of our creativity. We are able to develop uh, far faster than any other species. Yes, they may have um, better tech, but they've had a lot longer to evolve over. Yeah. Uh, and they may have de uh, evolved uh, technologically, but they haven't evolved spiritually. Um, they thought they could piggyback on humanity uh, their ascension process, which everyone goes through. So that's kind of um, where, where we're at with that. But then um, things started to change, and obviously um, going back to Drake, um, a lot of the groups behind the scenes uh, were too infiltrated, and then things went underground on many so many levels and people uh came forward on so many levels and the system uh kind of grew to the point where they could put pressure on the cabal all in hidden and i keep saying to this uh, people on the show you have no idea of how much is really going on because you will not see it on the internet you may hear snippets of it on certain radio shows. Um, uh, largely, all the other plans uh, that Drake put out are now very much underground and are being carried out in such a manner that it will not cause panic to the public. One day, the public will go, "Ah, that's changed." Yeah. Um, I mentioned uh, two weeks ago about uh, thousand year old charters and agreements and 500 year charter and agreements and the 200 year one and uh, also the 100 year one of a certain financial entity in the US that also ended, you know, a couple of years ago. And so technically now um, they are not uh, valid, uh, as is uh, the, neither is the IRS. But then we have people who are terrified to step forward into the new system for fear of what's going to happen to them. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Uh, we hope those people are provided with sufficient security to then come forward uh, in the, safe in the knowledge that the people, uh, if they approach the people, uh, they will not be lynched. You know, if they're going to prepare to help humanity fix this issue, and they will be adjudicated accordingly to whatever crimes they've done. Obviously, some of the more heinous, they will face the consequences. If it's something that they've been uh, corralled into doing because it's part of their family or it's part of their, you know, they made mistakes, didn't not realize them, and that everyone will get a fair uh, adjudication. And obviously, the outcome of which will be decided on how far those people are prepared to go to help correct the situation. So the uh, mass arrests um, are still ongoing. Thank Some you. You just answered a question that came up again from C. Veers on Facebook. But uh, it's a consistent question. I mean, it yeah. is. You know, yeah. because I think what people want, yeah, they I, I want, know what they, they want. They want everyone marching, marching down Pennsylvania. They want him shackled, hamstrung, <laughs> marched down Wall Street, marched <laughs> down Pennsylvania. Song. Yeah, exactly. And we can throw rotten tomatoes at them, you know. Uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, arrests have already taken place, mm -hmm. including high level. And yes, you may see those same people still operating in inverted commas but in essence they're being operated under a controlled manner and a lot of them um, have stepped out and um, the process will continue the uh, field of oper operation has narrowed so much now um, 
they can't interfere from the outside. They're not inter they're not interfering um, from below, and there's um, a much reduced uh, interference on the surface also. I know um, as we wind down here, there was a couple of questions as well um, that have come up about different internet personalities, uh, Simon Parks being one of them, obviously. And how do, how do we deal with the cult of personalities that are emerging, Thomas, on the internet where I've told people to trust their instincts and their intuition. You know, we're processing and filtering a lot of information. I've put some very specific things out about certain people, uh, Simon Parks being one of them, and that was not personally an attack on Simon Parks or anyone else, David Wilcock, whoever, Corey Good. But obviously, there's an onslaught of information out there that now people who are struggling to get up to speed are attempting to filter through all of this. Your thoughts and uh, any tips you have? Uh, like I said looking? earlier, um, it's very, very difficult for people now to understand it. Um, uh, who to believe, who to trust, you know? Um, has that person been consistent with their knowledge or did it change, did their personality change? Uh, where are they going with the information? What's mm -hmm. it leading to? Um, it's kind of disappointing. Um, we, uh, both of us are aware of certain individuals that are not operating f um, for the benefits of the people. Right. It's uh, uh, they've become service to self. You know, and um, what they can get out of it be a fame or fortune rather than um, making sure humanity has the knowledge to then uh, move forward and progress. And that um, kind of saddens me, particularly what, uh, one or two individuals kind of saddens me. And many people have asked me for the names of those people. Um, I don't think it's up to me uh, to give them help. As it always comes across as knocking the competition out. Well, yeah, right, uh, exactly. I'm not playing the competition because I don't see it as a competition. All, all I'm seeing is that we, we as people have got to get together, and that includes those particular individuals that are spouting also rubbish also. They either uh, get off the high horse or, or come back and join the people or face the consequences of the people. And the narrative, which will eventually break down and the people will see, what they're saying has been also BS and uh, good luck with the, their conscience, you know. So it doesn't need me to say this one saying this or this one saying that, you know. Uh, it's not really, I don't think it's my position to do that. And I don't think really it's helpful either um, because uh, whoever's, uh, whichever one is, is spouting uh, rubbish is still got elements of the truth that will exactly yeah exactly so there's a lot of people coming into this new and if they want to believe everything person a says fine at least it's then opening them up into another avenue where they may get nearer the truth than what they've been learning so there's always uh, some good use to it you know yeah. I, Hey, don't don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. No, and that's part of it. You know, I've said for a long time, I use the term chew hard and spit out the bones because we do, we have to filter through information. Even if you and I have, have gone through this process, we've had to go through the same thing too, yeah. even though we already knew some things. Yeah. So in a sense, it's a filtering process, and it's not an attack on other people out there or other voices so much as, Let's deal with this information and let's get it out of the way right now. You know, if you're doing something for profit and gain at the expense of the truth, then you really need to step up and own that. And that's part of yeah. what I think humanity has to do as a collective right now. We have to take responsibility. We have to take responsibility on every level of our existence for ourselves, for each other, for the truth, and for 
expansively planning a future for humanity as a whole, which I think, you know, that's, yeah. that's what we're really about doing. Well, the, uh, this foundation has the potential um, to be something extraordinary for the United States. Um, once certain things take place, it has the potential to make real change. The real change comes from all the listeners. The real change comes from all the people outside of the listeners, their friends and family. You push the message along. You know, it will all change, you know, because there's a mistrust of it. You say foundation. Sure, or yeah. Like the cabal. But, you know, we, the cabal are still in place, and so, um, so we have to work within their system. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is now. Whether it changes further down the line, who knows? Maybe this foundation will be, make the change, because suddenly we're um, improving people's lives. And then we encourage them, well, no, we've given you something. We're not asking for the money to come back. Maybe you offer a, a certain amount of your time. That will help somebody else. You know, um, there'll be, you know, uh, if it's just a straight pay payback of what they owe or what they need or they've got this idea, uh, as long as it's beneficial to humanity and it gets approved, you will get that funding. And um, we have a chance. Uh, humanity has a chance in this country and it's happening in other countries, not just America. This is. Unfortunately, I've taken on the most difficult one, as I was told. But yeah. I, I, I yeah. wouldn't suck it on if I didn't believe in the American people. But they uh, couldn't uh, learn to work together and help each other. I would not have taken it on. You know, I, I do not like to lose. And I don't think I will lose. I think the American people, once it goes out and you'll see early on proof that the funds actually going out to ordinary people and uh, the people will then respond accordingly and it will quickly go viral and spread like wildfire and then we get we'll get real change because we will be the drivers of the change it's the people it's the people that have the power not not the cabal not the elite, not the governments and the politicians the people have the power by working together and acting together and the other thing is we get uh, with this foundation we'll get people actually physically talking to each other again instead of just texting because they're going to have to work together in, the, in their own yeah. communities and we get community spirit back and uh, oh you're, you're struggling you know they may come together for um, something to do with the project and suddenly all these different people come together and talking about they've got issues oh I know blah blah he'll be able to fix that for you and bit by bit it just grows and grows and grows um, because the changes that Drake was talking about would have been uh, too radical in my opinion for the level we are at as, as uh, people in this country it would have been too much of a shock and um, it's going to be done in stages, uh, like disclosure. Oh, look what we found here will be the way um, disclosure will go ahead. Uh, whether that changes over the next two years is another matter. But as it stands now, it's continuing. It's look what we found. Oh, we found wars from Mars. Oh, we found wars from Pluto. Oh, look, we found uh, ET on blah, blah. That's how disclosure will come about. So um, once the people have raised their own empowerment and realized that really you have all the power, then the uh, opportunities for humanity are going to go uh, through the roof and we will develop and we will evolve into a species that doesn't need others controlling. We can look after ourselves. I think that's actually a perfect way to wrap it up, Thomas. What a vision. Um, thanks for coming on with us and for sharing this. I know there's some contact information, and what we'll do is uh, send that information over to me. We'll put that up with the video as well so that people know how to contact you. They can also find you on Cosmic Voice on Facebook, which is a private group that they can join. Yeah. And... Um, 
the blog talk radio show is yes uh, the, the blog talk is um drake bailey blog talk uh cosmic voice which is uh wednesday at 8 p.m uh eastern standard time sometimes it's two and a half hours uh, per week sometimes it's three and sometimes we kind of have special shows of a yeah. event um so it's uh if people want to donate to the foundation it's uh, go to paypal and uh, enter tgw that's tango golf whiskey usa as in united states of america uk as in united kingdom at hotmail.com so that's tgw usa uk at hotmail.com and if you can just give a dollar, we can get a dollar off every American. We've got 300 million to give out um, and really improve people's lives. Yeah, know. that's, that's uh, pretty awesome when you break it out that way. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Thomas, yeah. It'll be good. Thomas Williams, thanks for coming on. Our best to you as you go forward with this mission. I know we'll be talking again soon. This is our Planet TV. I'm Randy Boggins. The truth is out there. It's inside you. And now... You can build on a better foundation of truth. Okay.